Boys and girls, welcome to the Salford and the Prem deadline day special where we're going to be taking part. I mean, who, who doesn't take part? Who has ever seen that and thought to themselves, yeah, nah, not, not, not going not gonna to do that. Like, it, it only takes a wee bit longer. It's a fun experience. You get a cool animation when you simulate forward. It's a win-win situation. Unfortunately, one thing that isn't really a win-win situation is the fact that we only have £5 million in our account now. Well, that obviously means I've signed some players, but to be honest with you, I'm um, not that chuffed with a the by the border. Hey guys, and welcome back to the third episode of the FM22 Salford in the Prem save with me. Raxall FM, where today we are playing against Cardiff in the Premier League and of course, more importantly, going through the deadline day. So you guys are going to have to strap in, listen to me for about 15 minutes if I ramble on, try and find a way to spend this uh, £5 million and actually try and increase it. But with 40% transfer revenue retained, it's going to be difficult to increase it significantly. If you guys are excited for that, please make sure you do smash the like button as well as subscribing to the Raxel Film YouTube channel so you don't miss the daily football magic content coming your way with this save as well as transfer guides here and there. Can we smash 10 likes once again to celebrate wrapping up the transfer window? And we're going to go over what we have done since last time we saw each other right now. I've made a lot of deals starting with the sales. The only one we've done is getting Leon Pish out on loan, which I'm not even that chuffed about because I kind of wanted to sell him because he kind of sucks. So um, a bit, bit of an underwhelming one there. But we have confirmed the signing of Sergio Vera. It looks like a very promising uh, young centre-back option for the future. So thanks to Chuck for getting me to scout outside of Europe. We also brought in this young man here, Fagul... For Faguli? Is it Faguli? I don't know, but I talked to you about him last time. He was a bit of a stab in the dark, but I'm very happy that we went for that stab because we have hit something. I think we've hit something pretty decent. For £2.6 million, I think this man is a really good buy. He's got a bit of ability. The only thing that does confuse me a wee bit is I don't really know where to play him. Like, he's not got the attacking prowess to be a Mazala in terms of finishing, in my opinion. Um, He's not got the tackling to be a deep line playmaker on defend and he's just not got either of those things to be a box to box midfielder so I'm, I'm really unsure as to where I should be playing him so I'm just kind of playing him in the, the one position I probably shouldn't be playing him box to box midfielder for now but we'll, we'll work it out as we go we've also brought in Nigren who is a very good youngster in most years of football manager I think this year he's gone down a wee bit in terms of potential ability but at 24 years of age and bring them in for just 6.5 million pounds. I think that this is a really good bit of business because we can sell them for a profit in the future without a doubt. But also, I think we're going to get a good bit of use from a three star current ability and four star potential ability player who can play on right wing, left wing, cam, central midfield, and striker. So, a lot of versatility there. It is a little bit more than I would have liked to have paid for a three star current ability player, but it's not the worst signing I've ever made. I'll tell you what is one of the worst signings I've made. Well, actually, not this Nathan Ferguson one. This one's fine. This one's actually, actually a really good deal because we paid 300 and sorry, 775,000 pounds for a man that is now worth six million pounds. Good deal. Pretty happy with it. 24 years of age, can improve, looking good. This one I'm a bit gutted with though. Don't get me wrong, really good option as a centre back, but Ben Wilmot wasn't what I expected him to be. Our scouts did say he would be four star current ability. I think I got kind of in my head about the fact that we don't have any players on four star current ability, which makes them Premier League quality. So I was like, you know what? Let's splurge. And no, he is a decent Premier League. No, I'm happy with him now. A absolutely chuffed because we actually don't have any players apart from him. That are considered to be decent Premier League players. So, you know, I'm happy with them now. But 4.2 million pounds is a decent fee, especially when it can go up to 6.25. In a position that we don't really need to strengthen, I'm a bit gutted that I didn't spend that money elsewhere in hindsight. But it's not the worst deal of all time. And, of course, something that we can make some money from. So, him starting at centre-back is going to be a difficulty because I don't really want to take Cabraja off. And I really don't want to take Fagan Walcott out, especially considering the fact this man has managed to get a 7.53 average rating in the Premier League. 
Like, he's, he's very good at football, isn't he? And we've also managed to win our first game in the Premier League, lost in the Carabao Cup, but we beat Millwall 1-0, scoring our first goal with Daniel James, who has actually performed pretty well since coming back from injury. So I'm chuffed about that. So now we have to refocus on the transfer deadline day, and I already know what I want to do. Kind of. So <laughs> we want to sell Murphy. First of all, I don't like him. I want him out of the club. Robson, we want to sell as well. Matt Smith, we want to loan out. Johnson, we definitely want to sell. Uh, and Hitchcock, we want to get out on loan. That's what we want to do in terms of getting rid of players. In terms of bringing in players, I kind of just want anyone that is four-star current ability. Not a centre-back anymore because I have enough of them. But it's, it's really getting to the point where I just need to improve some positions to the point where we've got at least one star man, but with five million pounds, it's not really the amount we need to do exactly that. And especially considering the fact that I don't actually have anyone scouted or on my shortlist of note, it's it's not looking that likely. Although Harry Wilson is currently in talks with us, he is also in talks with Norwich, and I, I just have a feeling he's going to pick Norwich in the end. My cat is biting my hand, and I need to pause it because she's been biting it for like literally five minutes of this. And I've just been ignoring it, acting like it's not happening. But literally, she's hanging off my hand right now, attacking it. She's still a kitten, doesn't know the whole boundaries thing. So I'm pausing the recording, and I'm going to shut her in a different room, because it's really hurting, and I can't ignore it anymore. Sorted. Okay, so as I was saying, Harry Wilson could be joining the club. Would be very happy with this, as he is a four-star, well, maybe not even four-star, but he's got really good stats. So that's the kind of saving grace. Like, I know that he'll be a good player, no matter what, based off those stats. So... I think all we got to do now is just simulate forward, hope that we get a couple of decent players pop up. Of course, we will be scouting them as soon as possible. And actually, probably offering out players would be intelligent, considering the fact that there was like five players that I want to get rid of. So let's see if we can get Jacob Murphy to talk to clubs. I don't think Robson will talk to clubs because he has just signed a new contract. It's just sort of now that we're in the Premier League, I've realized, yeah, we don't need him anymore. So let's see what we can do with Johnson. No one has wanted him. I've moved him all the way down to like 700k and no one wants him. He's worth way too much. He's not that good. But I think that someone should be coming in for Matt Smith. Like it bothers me if no one does because he's actually a really good player who deserves to get some game time. Again, with Hitchcock, really good youngster. Not high wages. I don't know why people wouldn't come in for bids for him. So we'll see what happens here. We'll simulate forward one day. Hope that we get some offers. We haven't been getting offers recently for these players. Maybe deadline day will create a bit more interest for them. And I'm hoping that we get some players on the report. So we do already have some bids and we do already have some players on the report. And anything over a B is interesting to me. But that is not that interesting. Okay, B. Uh, it's not bad, but you are... How old? He's getting on, I know, 31 years of age. I'm not that interested in that, sorry. We do have Calderon in that position as well. No offers for five players. So who is the one player that we got? Oh, for goodness sake. Now, we've got uh, awards coming in as well. It's Murphy that's getting the offers, but on loan. Well, that's just very annoying because I'm not I'm definitely not doing that, am I? What the heck? Okay, well, let's, let's try getting these players to talk to clubs. Who, who, who? Robson. Um, made it clear. There we go. He's not going to fight it. Cabraja is the young player of the, 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 the month, by the way. Just just think we should mention that, actually. Well, well done, mate. Very chuffed about that. See, that makes my centre-back decisions even harder. And, you know, I'll actually consider selling Cooper. I'll offer him out and see if we get an offer. But just because he's not better than any of the other centre-backs and... He's worth a fair bit if we can get him sold, which doesn't look like... No, not going to happen, okay. I'm not willing to put him on the transfer list because that's just going to immediately ruin his value. But, you know, just maybe five at the back is the way to go. But no one is coming up here. It's just that Kadira dude. And then some C-pluses left, right and centre. Let's check the transfer list, see what's going on. This is the most... Got to be the most clueless one we've ever done on this channel. Absolutely no idea what's going on in this transfer deadline day, but we'll see what comes across the line. We might end up signing a player. If we don't, to be honest, I feel quite bad for making you sit through this because I've already been talking for about 10 minutes, to be honest. So it's not even to be honest, it's just straight up facts. Like, I'm obviously not going to be lying about that, but I really hope we can get some offers in. These players that I'm trying to get rid of, 
but doesn't look like it's going to be happening. And we just need to hope that the right players come up on these scout reports. Again, a youngster with five-star potential is not really what I'm interested in, but I think we might be able to get Harry Wilson. And to be honest, if we get him, I consider this a, a small W. So I'm going to adjust the budget. I think we now have zero million pounds, but I'm happy with that. 28-year-old, plenty of Premier League experience, decent quality right now. Oh, it's not four. Like if he was four star, it would have made me feel on top of the world. But I'm actually still happy with that three and a half star current ability. Immediately gone up to a lot more value than that. I think we've actually gone a really decent player there for a really good fee. So overall, chuffed about this. I mean, could be could be a lot better. But I, th I think at the end of the day, you can't complain too much with that, as he is going to be an important player for us. He's a good Skybet championship. He's unlikely to improve, but trust me, mate, he can play in the Prem. He can do the business, and he's certainly going to be starting on that right wing. But now we have a lot of winger options. A lot of winger options. What am I up to, boys and girls? I have no idea what I'm, what I'm doing with the balance of this team. Yeah, we have, we're completely out of money now. Actually, in fact, we're in debt. The selling a player would, would be very handy. But for some reason, no one wants any of the players. Well, I know why no one wants any of the players I've got up because they suck. But what if I try? I'll honestly, I'll sell Murphy for next to nothing because he's just got a decent high wage. So let's see if we can do that. Robson will offer out again. You know, again, I'll I'll move him down. And see if we get any offers. Johnson once again, I'll move him down. But because he's injured, I think also means that we won't get any offers. I really don't want to get rid of Matt. Smith with no wage contribution, but it might have to happen. So I'll go down to 40 and nothing to see if anyone contributes. Hitchcock, I'm absolutely fine with getting rid of him with no wage contribution. So I'll just go regular starter. And if, if no one's coming in from then, then there's actually something wrong with this game. And Vera, I forgot Vera. I do want to loan Vera out as well because he's not going to get a lot of game time for us. So let's try and get him out as a regular starter. I imagine we'll get one or two offers for those players but i don't think any transfers which is kind of what we're really eyeing up here it is murphy i'm chuffed about that i'm i'm stoked definitely absolutely fine with that loan approach for vera regular starter and sutton garbage trucks coming through don't know if you can hear it league two i'm i'm chuffed about that too this is only good stuff happening here olsen young goalkeeper as well you know if he's regular starter he's regular starter you can go too. Look, this has just turned into a beautiful deadline day. 2.5 million pounds for Murphy. I'll take that. I'll absolutely take that and run with it. Let's see if we can get anyone else out. Murphy sets a sign. So long, mate. I hated you. Absolutely hated you. I imagine he'll go up in value because I think I did sell him for quite cheap there. But you know what? I'm okay with it. Absolutely fine with it. Vera set to go on loan to Sutton. This is, you know what? I, I consider this a successful transfer deadline day. We have gotten... A good player in, in for, okay, for quite a bit actually, but 6.5 is not insane for this kind of quality and this sort of Premier League experience. I am now thinking about just offering out Matt Smith because I do kind of want him to get off the books just because, well, he will still be on the box in books if we do that. But Hitchcock is getting no offers, which infuriates me from a realism standpoint because it's not like no one would be interested in a young striker from a Premier League club who has the ability to play at at least a Vandarama National League level. But, okay, that's it. And there we go. There we go. Offer for Smith. But it's no wage contribution. He's not even a starting player. I mean, I'm going to do it, but I'm not happy about it, that's for sure. I mean, we'll, we'll see, see what happens in terms of the rest of the offers. But I think that that might be all we can get across the line, unfortunately. Take a look, well, not that money, but I'm intrigued about who they're getting in these scout report things. No one of interest coming through. I think that that C, B minus player is a player that we've already looked at. That's had a decent, yep, that's exactly right. So, doesn't look like a lot's going on. What about the transfer list? Don't, don't really have the money to do it at the moment, but, you know, adjust the thing. There we go, now we've got some money. So, if we do want to spend it, we can on a really good player oh, Danny Ceballos he would have been good to get in but I don't think we have the money to do that anymore I really hope you can't hear this this garbage truck first you know my, my dog my dog my cat biting me I wish it was my dog actually I don't have a dog but if, you know I'd be slightly more respectable if my dog was biting me and I was whinging about it it's something about 
you cat biting you and whinging about it that it's slightly shameful to be honest oh he's he's not bad but i don't think he would turn into anything special and we don't have money like what I'm, I'm getting obsessed over these players i should be more focused on the time i'm taking to make this video we've still got a game to play still playing cardiff after you know making all of our transfers so i gotta simulate forward see if i can make some more deals it kills me to do this but i will do it with with him johnson i really want to leave the club i don't think i'm going to be able to sell him which kills me inside i'll try 500k and that's as low as i'll go i'm thinking i don't need this many right backs i don't like knoyle that much anyway so i will offer him out and if he kicks up a fuss we'll see what happens and deal with it from there is there anyone else that i need to get rid of barlow isn't going to get a lot of game time i've officially decided so if i can get him out on loan that would be world class but i don't think that's going to happen especially with his wages but we'll see what happens we'll, we'll give it a whirl stab in the dark you never know uh ambrose as well might not get some time so i'll again try getting him out on loan if it doesn't happen not the end of the world but you know have a cheeky stab in the dark see what happens anyone else i'm not certain will get game time cooper as i've said but i'd probably rather keep him around in case we want to go five at the back hitchcock really want to get out on loan really want to get out on loan so i'll just loan no nothing just if you want him you can have him you don't have to make me any promises just have him Noyle's keen to discuss future which is a little gutting but ambrose looks like he could be leaving the club on loan um kind of mixed in that but to be honest I, I don't think he's going to be starting for us i think it's better for his development to play in a starting role in the championship team and uh in a club where he's going to get some serious game time instead of for us so i think that's the right call especially with a man that does have a decent amount of potential i think that's the right decision noyle not happy about ah. Oh, I'm tempted just to list them and see what happens, but we'll, we'll see what happens with this discussion. Um, oh no, actually, maybe I'll try and get Toure to deal with it. Toure, you, you're good at talking people out of stuff. Not resolved it. Knoyle. Um, I don't want to promise you that because you just you, no you, no. I've, I've angered him. It's I'm in too deep now. Let's let's transfer list them. Let's see what happens. It, it's it's um it's too late. Please get an offer. Please get an offer. If we don't get an offer, I've immediately messed this up and just made Knoyle upset when I haven't needed to make him upset. But, you know, it's a risk you take. I've taken a risk. This simulation is taking much longer than I care to like. Um, and we haven't gotten a transfer offer for him. So uh, that that's just me angering a player with, with literally no benefit to the team. Good to know. Good to know. Good to know. Just going through the scout reports before we confirm that loan off at all. I think it's the right call. Ambrose is definitely a usable player, but I think with the amount of players that we have in his position at the moment, I think it's the right decision. So I'm a bit, bit upset about losing him, but I know that he's going to be getting a lot of game time in a club where he's going to be doing a lot better for our, for them than he will be for us. So Ambrose, develop, do well, and you'll be back in the team. I guarantee you next season. Just for this season, I'm giving you a wee bit of a break. But I think apart from the players that I'm obviously trying to sell, we're kind of all right. Kind of all right. Knoyer was wanted. So, it's, look, promising things. Let's try moving him down to five. If you, if you take five, there's a brilliant deal in my eyes. I, would, I think it, I win because I get five million. You win because you get a player. Not a player worth five million pounds, but you know, you get a player. So it's a win win situation here, boys and girls. And no one's making the offer for it because they probably know he's not actually worth the amount of money. Uh, yep, no, he's he's got no intention of leaving. Uh, this ve it's very upsetting when a player doesn't want to leave your club. I mean, it's com it's kind of complimentative, but you know, it's also kind of upsetting. I'll go as low as 2.5, but otherwise, I'll just keep him around the club, see what happens. I think even if we do get the offer, I think it's a bit late in the transfer window. So this might be the team that we're left with. A couple of players we didn't want to keep around, but not the worst players to have around the club. And I think I think we'll be okay for this season. I think we've done enough to stay up. A lot of young, small signings. Nothing too insane. Like There's no one standout, incredible feat. But there's a lot of decent players. And I think just about all of them 
have been wingers. Which, which makes me think I've, I've, I've completely overloaded the wingers. Because we, we've always had an issue with wingers. Yeah, no, I've kind of overloaded the wingers. Well, Angel, Go, Angel Gomez is more of a central midfielder for us at the moment. So he's not a winger. No, it doesn't count. Wilson, yeah, he's definitely a winger. Um, Nygren, probably probably more of a winger than a, than a central midfielder for us and, and the way I want to play him. Daniel James, definitely a winger. Yeah, no, I've definitely overloaded the wingers, so I'm not I'm not completely sure how we're going to line up this team. But if we pick without restrictions, apparently this is our best eleven without one of our main players, Gomez. So uh, I find that interesting. But I I can get behind this team. I can absolutely get behind it. We'll simulate forward, get ready for the game, see what happens. You never know. We could end up getting an offer for Knoyle for a club outside of the. No, I think, I think this is the team that we're using. We are mentally prepared, but unfortunately not physically prepared for this game as we've picked up injuries to multiple important players. John Jules, Callum Wilson, okay, Wilma and Johnson, not so important. But then Gomez as well. It's not been a lucky couple of days for us. And it does mean that Nygren is starting up top. I mean, he can do it. I don't know how good at it he's going to be. But he can't, he can do it, that's the important thing. I mean, I'm not chuffed about it at all. I mean, I thought, you know, Wilson, John Jules, you got cover. You got plenty of cover. You'll be fine if Wilson gets injured. No, no, they're both injured. Of course they are. But I still back this team. I still think it's a very good 11 with Wilson making his debut. Uh, Faguli, I don't even know if it's Faguli. Fag, Fag, Fagioli? Fag, 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 Fagioli. Yeah, I think it's Fagioli, but I feel weird about saying that. I might just keep going for Gooley. Someone please let me know down in the comment section below. I'm not certain how to say it. I swear, if you can hear that, um, honestly, my cat just needs to be thrown out of the house when I'm recording. There's, no, not having it, not having it. Let's jump into this game, though. I back the team that I've got out there, but it would be nice if they're, to have a Callum Wilson up top. But we've got Harry Wilson, another Wilson. He can have number 11. Just coming into the team, star player for us. Hopefully, he does something incredible in today. I'm sure you'll be able to hear that. Like, if you can't hear that, for reference, she's just playing with it a little. But she's been very obnoxious about it. Hold the phone. For goodness sake, like normally, like ten episodes into a series, I'm fine with you know making some mistakes, having my cat get involved. You know, so far in the series, episode one didn't turn on the mic. Episode three, cat's getting in the way. Like, you know, it's it's not successful so far, but. I'm hoping that it's going to be successful on the pitch as this is one of the teams that we certainly can be. 19th place Cardiff away from home. We're up in 14th place, but only because, you know, we've got that one win from out of nowhere. Again, well, not really from out of nowhere when it's against the team at the bottom of the table. But again, it was away from home, so you never know what's going to happen. I'm hoping we do get a result here today. But early on, it's them having the first opportunity, but heading it straight over the bar. And it doesn't look like we're doing a whole lot with the ball. We're losing position pretty quickly. So I'm going to move down to a shorter passing type of play. Because that did work when we were versing the Leicester City. Helped us get a wee bit more of the ball. Hopefully it does the exact same in today's match. 10 minutes to go in the first half. Doesn't look like we're going to be seeing another opportunity. But at least we now have four shots and 45% position. Previously we had 40% position and very few shots. So I think that slight adjustment might have helped us out. Especially considering we now are in with the ball. Do lose it immediately. And to be fair, it was a short pass that ended up losing us the ball. But they could be smashing it long. We could be getting it back. And we do exactly that. Martin Calderon back into Fagan Walcott. All the way back to Kova. I don't mind it at all. Because as you know, if you've been a long-time viewer of the save, you know that when you pass it back to a goalkeeper, it leads to a goal. Nygren, Doyle, looking for space. That is not space, Doyle. That is yeah, that, that's the opposite of space. That is a player. It's not the player that you were looking to pass it to either. And it's led to a goal. Very upsetting. They passed it back to their goalkeeper as well, and um, you know, kind of kind of worked for them there. Andres Pereira, former Manchester United player, Pierre Tech as well, getting the nod and just finishing it. It's it's a, it's disappointing to see just before the halftime break, but probably has been coming on the grand scheme of the game. Not chuffed with the performance, but not fuming with it. I'm sure we can find a way to get ourselves back into it. Maybe move to a positive mentality, see if that does anything for the second half. No points in back and relaxing. 
being one goal down. You've got to try and get some sort of attacking momentum behind the boys and get us to get a goal. So I'm going to start off by trying to do that by making a substitution. I'm tempted to bring Hitchcock on, but he's just, I don't feel like he's good enough to be that advance forward for us. But this is where youngsters become heroes. So we'll give it a whirl. We'll play Nigren over on the left wing. Is he more suited? Yeah, he's more suited as a winger on that side. So play him as a winger. See what he can do. And hope that he creates some opportunities for Hitchcock up top. Oh my gosh, if Hitchcock scores. Why am I trying, youngsters, at this point in the season, in important games? I, I'm actually fuming with myself. I've just realised, like, this is a really important game because this is a team that we can beat. I'm bringing on Hitchcock, a player they just tried to loan out, literally no one wanted. I'm thinking, yeah, no, he's going he's gonna to be, be able to turn this game around for us. No, he's not. This was the stupidest decision I've ever made. Why did no one tell me? <laughs> I'm going to say... Gomez can come on even though he is injured. Hopefully he can make an impact. Not seeing any opportunities in the second half. A lot more shots for us though. Higher XG. But the shots are suddenly starting to come Cardiff City's way. Can we see one more highlight? Can we see one more chance? I don't think it's going to happen. And we're losing this game 1-0. Ah, oh, that is disappointing. Now, I do look back on the Hitchcock transfer and think to myself... Was that the most intelligent decision? I mean, it's not It's not a terrible performance. Once again, it does show that we can compete against these sides, but we just need to find a way to create better attacking opportunities. I guess moving down to this more defensive style might be contributing to the fact that we're not creating so many chances going forward. So perhaps we should go back to using the 4-3-3 with a cam when we're versing those weaker sides because we know we can beat them. We have beaten them as they've been in our league previously but um yeah against liverpool and manchester city i don't think i'm going to be going with the camp but we'll see what happens maybe i'll even try a five at the back it's uh it's going to be difficult two games though and i'll jump into them off camera you guys don't have to suffer through it i'll simulate forward about five games so we should be back for norwich and wolves which i feel like is a decent combination of games two that we could actually win and compete in but also kind of interesting teams. i don't know it's just it's Premier League football, come on, like, you got to be excited about whatever I give you, but in the idea of trying to keep this video under half an hour, I will end it here, thank you guys so much for watching, make sure to like this video if you have enjoyed it, and subscribe so you don't miss the daily football manager content coming your way, I'll see you all later.